Hi everyone, it's Tornet at John's Furniture Repair today. And I've just got a little tiny project here that uh, I'm gonna do today. And uh, it has to do with a dog that was not very good. It wasn't my dog. Shop dog always knows not to chew wood, but some dogs are still learning, so that's okay. So this is a piece for a chair, an upholstered chair. And there's two of them. So one goes on one side, one goes on the other and uh, they look real delicious so somebody ate the other one i won't name any names so we got to make a new one so i've got a uh, piece of poplar here and uh, we're gonna do the opposite side so <clears throat> i'm thinking um everything's pretty straight grained on this piece of poplar and i'm picking poplar because it's a little bit easy to carve and i have to put all these grooves in and uh, they kind of look like pop-ups if you take this part away, it looks like a little paw. So we're just going to be tracing this onto a um, piece here. And it's definitely, you know, too wide, but we can take that down on the bandsaw. So I'm just going to get the general um, shape. And I'm going to leave it fat for all of the work that we have to do. I'm just going to kind of angle my... pencil outward so that's generally what it's going to do so now we're doing the other side so we want to flip this that way when we do the carving so this is actually the bottom of uh, the other piece because this one goes this way the other side has to go that way that's the key to doing these things it's not forgetting that because that would be really tragic if I carved a whole another piece that looked exactly like this one um, so yeah I'm just going to write that right away so that I know when I go to uh, flip it um, or when I get it off the band side, I know this is the bottom of that piece. So let's get it cut. Hey everyone, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, my very first official sponsor. So what is Skillshare? If you don't know, it's an online platform where you can take classes and learn new skills. There's a ton of stuff on there, photography, design, even woodworking. Uh, one class that I noticed that I was very interested in and I've always been interested in is oil painting with Sarah McKendry. Uh, she's got a beautiful energy and I thought her classes flowed and were super approachable. But there's a ton of more teachers on there. Check them out. Um, so it's a monthly subscription fee, which is way cheaper than taking a class at your local community center. And uh, on Skillshare, you can take a bunch of classes. It's unlimited. So I'm gonna throw a link in the description of this video and the first 1,000 people who use it can get a free one month trial. So check it out. Okay, so I've got the piece cut out here. Um, cut it this way and this way and every which way. And it's just um, a rough cut, so there's still lots of things to do here. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, tape these two together and get these uh, lines referenced onto this piece as best I can. So, just gonna use my finger as a, a guide and I'm just gonna move my pencil out and keep my finger on the side of the piece. And then this point way over here, I'm just gonna bring up, it starts kinda down a little back from the tip there. And then I'll do the same thing on the back It's kind of like a rough reference there. And then we can take the tape off. And I'm just gonna take a straight edge. I'm gonna bring these lines up a little bit so I can get my straight edge to connect. Oops. 
Okay, now that I got the lines sorted out, I'm just gonna take my saw and I'm gonna start cutting in my grooves and I'm just gonna go past the tooth. for depth. So I've got this thing sanded uh, with 120 and uh, looks like there's a few little differences. This line here is a little bit longer. I did make a boo-boo right here, so I had to use a little bit of putty, but that's okay. Um, but other than that, we're looking pretty good. Uh, this kind of tapers off a little bit more that way, so I might bring this side in a little bit, just seeing that there's a bit more of a point right there but not much so I don't want to I mean I could play with this forever but uh, I think it's gonna be good enough and uh, I'll sand it with 180 just to get a little bit finer and then we're gonna be uh, working with some stain to match it up there okay so I've got this thing sanded up to uh, 180 so I'm gonna get to staining now and I'm gonna use um, Verathane's uh, gel stain here. This one they don't make anymore. It's called Special Walnut. Um, they do have this color still, but not in the gel form. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually um, wipe some Varsol over this piece because I don't want this to go really dark. I kind of want to use the um, stain like a, a glaze. And what Varsol does is kind of act like a wood conditioner and allows the stain to kind of well, it doesn't let it penetrate into the, the grain so much. I'm just going to pour it on there into those grooves. And I will be um, cleaning this one up too, but I just want to get my color down before I do anything with that one. Okay, so then I'm just going to take... Um, a little brush full of this stuff. If I can get any. This one's almost gone. That's okay, I'll still get color out of it. So I'm just going to work it in there. And I want these things to look old and burnished because the rest of the chair isn't uh, getting refinished. We don't have it. It's at the upholster. 
So that's a good start, but definitely going to need some more color for, you know, getting in this area, but this is a really nice match to this part of the, the arm. So let me grab some, something darker and, uh, See if we can get it to penetrate into these areas. But this is a really good start here. And I always like to start a little bit light. I mean, the other thing I could do is just leave more color on. But I don't think that's really going to work too good. So let me grab another stain and we'll see if we can get a little bit darker. And now what I'm going to do is just burnish off some of these high points. You can kind of see how um, this piece has worn this part and this part and the edges here where you would touch. So naturally this section here, a little bit more worn. And that section there and along this edge kind of misses the inside there <laughs> kind of like that so this color looks off um, when it's dry like this but um, when you use a little bit of um, Varsol or something you can see that uh, chestnutty color come off and I'll probably tint it a little bit with something warm but for the most part that is good okay so I've got a uh, light oak toner here I'm just going to give it a little bit of a light touch. Yeah, that's good. I think I could use a little bit of burnt umber. So let me grab that too. Just to give it that um, kind of orangey tone that we're seeing there. Yeah, that's kind of in line. So um, now we can uh, take the finish off of this one and uh, get it to uh, look just like this one. But I can see the tones are right, so uh, we can take care of this one. This one needs to dry a little bit before we do any clear coats, but we'll prep this one while we're waiting. And it's got some damage, some big dents here uh, that need addressing. So I think I'll probably leave the holes for the nails because they have to put them in there anyways. But we'll just sand this guy off and get him all prepped for the thing. Okay, now we got this guy all ready to go. So we'll just do the exact same thing. And then the 
dye stain. Just reference this one and we'll do some burnishes. And I don't think this one needs the yellow because uh, it was a more yellow wood. So I'm just going to try the um, burnt umber. First, you can add the yellow if we need to, but I don't think we're going to need it. Yeah, if anything, I should add a little bit more burnt umber to this one, because I think that one's pretty good. It's a little bit more right there. Yeah. Let's just add a wee bit more to this one. It should be pretty bang on. Great, so these just need to dry and then we can uh, get on to some sealer coats. But they're looking like they're pretty close. Okay, so I've got uh, three coats of lacquer on these guys looking pretty good. I'm just going to do the last step, which is buffing them with the dry steel wool, four odd steel wool, so they look kind of worn and burnished in all the grooves. And I want them to look all fresh and new. Because the rest of the chair will have worn wood everywhere. one two little arms ready to go back on the chair so uh, this is the one that we made this is the original looks pretty good this one's maybe a tinge bit more red but they're gonna look good opposite side here Yeah, so thanks for uh, joining me on this one, guys. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying my videos. And check out all our other ones. Otherwise, yeah. thanks for checking us out. And uh, see you next time.